you say, Your Honor, but there is a difference that matters. It's a distinction with a difference because what Mr. Steele was putting up is a picture of Defendant Williams with a young man whom evidence has come out did not associate with Defendant Williams after a particular time. So can you point the court uh, and defense counsel to the portions? And I know we don't have Detective Dennis's transcript yet, but we have the transcript from um, Mr. Donovan Sr. You should have gotten that forwarded from Ms. Weaver. Um, have you had an opportunity to look at it yet? Okay. And while we are looking for um, more specific language, I just want to point out to the court that to the extent that the objection is made that there was a comment on the evidence or the evidence saying a particular thing, two things as it relates to what I said, I intentionally did not speak a particular name for multiple reasons. Um, and I was particularly vague for multiple reasons, but the objection that I had was that Mr. Steele asserted through his language that that particular flyer was introduced in 2015, and that was put forth before the jury more than once. Right. And Mr. Sledge agreed with that, and Mr. Steele then put forth a flyer that um, he said would have chronologically come after that flyer that I had the objection to. And that flyer that he put up was one from December 2014. Um, so this is not um, a circumstance where I testified, I alluded um, to, I made reference to something that I believe existed. I did not comment on you know, the, mm -hmm. what that evidence was or make a comment on the evidence. But unlike a circumstance where a lawyer would say, you know, that didn't happen to a question being asked, I simply said the evidence, there's been evidence. I didn't say what evidence. I didn't comment on a particular piece of evidence. And so in as much as my statement to the court was intended to orient the court and to apprise the court of why I was making the objection without speaking too much about it, I would ask the court to overrule Mr. Steele's objection to my objection and deny any motion that he made as a result of it. But we are still at the court's direction looking for the language that led us to be where, led me to make the statement that Understood. I made. And Mr. Steele, uh, looking back, and you, when we were talking about it Friday, you said you weren't sure that you had said 2015, but looking back on page 10 before the objection by Ms. Love, you do say 20, I mean, you don't say, but you're asking, is that 2015? And uh, the witness agrees, and apparently everybody knew it was 2014. So, May I speak? Sure. So I, I agree, I misspoke. I did not do it intentionally, but that's for the court to determine. Um, and Ms. Love, I hope you feel better. Um, thank you, sir. My, my issue goes to three things, really. And the reason, and thank you for allowing me not to ask the jurors to be removed. I don't remember the time, but it was close to five and appropriate. Sure. But I appreciate you allowing that to happen and that it's still preserved. My, my, my issue, though, is, is this. I definitely misspoke. I watched the law and order or whatever, wrong crime. And then I got the transcript later. And I apologize. It, all that has to be said is, where's the date on it? Ms. Love said that, or are you certain, or do it on redirect? And then I corrected it, because I said this is in date order. And then I went back to the next flyer, is it the same band, same group? performing, and it's December 31, mm -hmm. 2014, going into January 1, 2015. I wanted to correct it. I didn't realize at the time I said 15. It just, I wasn't focused properly, I guess. 
But for a lawyer to then say, and the evidence has shown, that's my, that was my issue. Yeah, I understand what your motion addresses. And this is easy to figure out because I can't get these Twitters anymore. They're, they're gone. They, they won't. I tried to subpoena them. I can't get them. But the state, through Agent Racy, he's a cop county. He's now with ATF, but he was with Cobb County. He got a just, I don't know why, but just a certain amount of time from middle of December, to, excuse me, middle of 2014 to the middle of 2015. Got a year. All these are dated. The reason that these aren't dated I put in is because previously the state had an objection to any writing on it. But everybody has the date. It was December 26, 2014, and December 31 going into January 1, 2014-15. But my problem is we can't be making any lawyer what the evidence is until a closing argument, and the evidence is not closed yet. So that's my big problem. And I will say this. The state gave us an email, if they don't remember it, I could put in evidence for it, just for the record. On um, Friday, August 9th, 2024, um, at 5.22 p.m., your Honorable Court is CC through the Honorable Miss Persefield. And it gives the list of people who are going to be testifying. That's wrong. That's the wrong date. I gave the wrong date. I'm looking at the wrong date. I'm sorry. This was given the way it used to happen. I don't know if it still is, but Miss Hilton would give a list every Friday to the media and then to us of who the next witnesses are. And certain witnesses, for whatever reason, um, couldn't be shown. Right. So they were undercover agent or something like that. And then there were objections there, too. But on the media list of 5 10 24, so it's May 10, 2024. The uh, state had Detective Racy, which is R-A-I-S-S-I, by the way. He's now Agent Racy. And then followed by um, this performer, Mr. Lamar. His first name is D-E-Q-U-A-N-T-E-S. And he goes by um, Rich Homie Kwan. And um, that came to everyone via email from Ms. Hilton. That's May 2024. So my point is... The state um, had him on a short list. My point is the state um, had him on a short list. Mm -hmm. He's already under subpoena. And I assume the state knows this because they didn't call him. But on March 23, 2015, Mr. Uh, Lamar or Rich Homie Kwan, and this is all public, he said, I'm still affiliated with Rich Gang, with them, I'm talking about Rich Gang. In an interview, that was with Thesis, T-H-I-S-I-S 50. In an interview with ESPN on April 20th, 2015, and 2015 is right after the January 2015 got the death of Mr. Thomas. Mr. Lamar reaffirms that Mr. Williams will always be his, and I'm quoting it, brother. And with Vlad, V-L-A-D TV, Mr. Lamar talks about Mr. Williams on April 21, 2015, wishing Mr. Williams the best. In an interview, he states that he and Jeffrey have no, or excuse me, Mr. Williams have no, quote, bad blood. That's May 16, 2022. September 18, 2022. He talks about... Um, that they, they get along. In an interview with Cam Newton, August 15, 2022, he details how he's a fan of Mr. Williams' work even before they met, and he emphasizes that he and Mr. Williams never had a problem. And it goes on. He has other interviews here. The point I'm trying to make is I contest that there was this supposed eruption, and they don't get along. So the state put up Mr. Donovan Thomas Sr., they said last week to the Honorable Court, to make this claim, they don't put up the actual people involved. And I'm going to put up, if, if I need to, I know I don't have to put up a case, but if I need to, I'm going to put up people who observe the two of them together. The, uh, the people who interviewed him, I know I'm going to get objections to hearsay. But the point I'm trying to make is to say that I wrote, I said the wrong date doesn't need this additional. That falls on the, on the exact 
um, same platform as it, with the same witness last week. District Attorney Love read a plea colloquy in an unrelated Alford plea. I don't know how that happened. That's from Mr. Sledge. This. And then I believe, and, and it's not a violation because I, I try to speak with every witness. If they won't speak, that's fine. But at that June 9th, 2024 meeting at Starbucks in Fayetteville, there was clearly Brady evidence. Now, some of it was given to us. The Brady evidence that was given was what I originally said. It was uh, August 9, 2024. So, Your Honor, if, we're, if we could deal with one issue at a time, I don't have any problem addressing each of them. I would ask the court's indulgence to allow me to address each one in turn because I've heard about four so far. And we're on to Brady evidence at Mr. Sledge's interview, which is entirely different than the exhibit Mr. Steele put up um, that we were addressing. All right. Well, we were trying to give you time to find the portion of the testimony to support what you said on Friday. I think Mr. Steele's just if I, outlining what his other issues are going to be. Because I'm going to have to address each of those, and I do have a response to each of those, I was trying to listen and to take note. All right. We have two other people sitting at council table with you. I'm sure they're equally capable of running a word search and a transcript. Go ahead, Mr. Steele. It's just that, you know, at this meeting, it comes out that um, Jeffrey Williams is with Mr. Donovan Thomas days before he's killed, according to Mr. Sledge. I have other evidence that puts them together, but that's the contested part. It's not really Rich Homie Quan, it's Mr. Thomas, Donovan Thomas. And what the state's trying to say is that for the court certification, I believe this is what they're saying. Mr. Thomas is trying to be the manager of Rich Homie Kwan. Mr. Thomas doesn't want Rich Homie Kwan to sign with a man named Mr. Brian Williams, who's Birdman. Jeffrey Williams is not signed with Brian Williams, Birdman. And somehow Jeffrey Williams doesn't like the fact that Donovan Thomas won't let Rich Homie Kwan sign with an independent person. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey Williams has him killed. The jurors may adopt that. But when Mr. Sledge tells District Attorney Love on June 9, 2024, that Jeffrey Williams and Donovan Thomas were outside, and I thought it was TIG, but TI's, TI's studio, he's a performer named, he's a wonderful performer named Clifford Harris in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and they're having a good time. That's Brady Evans. And I never got that. Now, I did get it. I, I don't want to, there's no violation. I'm making it clear. I got it from Mr. Sledge and Mr. Wright, but we should have gotten it from the DA as well because they didn't know, I assume, they didn't know that I got it from other people and I don't think Mr. Matthews got it. I didn't share it with him anyway, so that's Brady Evans for him too because it's part of the state's case. Those are my issues. It just, that's one witness last week and <clears throat> it's the objection, it's the Brady, and it's the reading of a transcript. It's just a lot to deal with, and that's that's it. My objection, I asked for a mistrial. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm God willing, honest with everyone, but I don't want a mistrial, but I don't know what to do. So okay. those are my issues. All right, thank you. And I do apologize for the speaking, and, and I hopefully I cleared it up. I, I mean, it happens. I don't find any purposeful action on your part in saying the wrong year, but. Thank you, Your Honor, for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I apologize to the court in advance. My voice is a little lacking today. But um, as we are bringing up um, things and patterns, I want to bring to the court's attention a couple of things that the court would have knowledge of as the court could not have been present when it occurred. Um, I've read the portion of the transcript where I said, um, I, as it relates to a young man in the picture, I believe evidence has come out that, and I want to read it exactly as I said. Well, I Thank mean, you. I already read it out once. Um, 
Mr. Steele was putting up is a picture of a defendant, a defendant Williams with a young man whom evidence has come out, did not associate with defendant Williams after a particular time, a particular time, a particular time. So there have been instances during this trial with other witnesses, much like the way that Mr. Steele is alluding to instances that the state has brought up. I'm bringing this up for a reason, if the court would give me an indulgence, where the state has asked a witness a question, for instance, did Mr. Steele ask you to, did Mr. Steele stop the recording while you were talking? And Mr. Steele literally verbally stood up and said, that didn't happen. That did not happen. While the, see right there. And so giving testimony during trial, I did make an objection to that. That was addressed. That, in my estimation, is wholly different. And that is the kind of thing that it would appear Mr. Steele is sort of alluding to the state having done now, and it's not. I did not state anything about the weight of the evidence. I said vaguely, as vaguely as I could, I believe this has come out. The jury will know. My objection was intended to inform the court as to why I made that objection. I will point the court's attention, since Mr. Steele has brought up these interviews he's talking about, to the discovery we did provide. You know what? He admits there's not a violation. So have you found the portion of the transcript that you say supports your assertion that evidence has come out? Since I didn't name a person. I understand. But then you said to me afterwards, outside the presence of the jury, I've got a basis for saying that. And I did. Okay. During the examination of Donovan Thomas Sr. by Ms. Hilton, she asked whether or not they, Mr. Thomas Sr., ever saw this person, this gentleman that I was referring to, and Defendant Williams perform again after December 2014. Okay. He said no. That was the evidence. That is the reason that I said that evidence has come out that these people didn't associate after a particular time. I intentionally did not want to speak on the state in my place that unlike interviews and all of that, we've had interviews by people other than counsel in the courtroom. We've actually had interviews where we have had investigators told that after the murder of Donovan Thomas, that this gentleman and Defendant Williams did not speak again, period. After they saw each other in Miami following the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr., a question was asked, where is Woody? Defendant Williams told this person, Woody was in Atlanta, this person looked over and saw Woody on a turntable or something in that same club, and this person walked away and did not say another word to him afterwards. The point that I'm making is that when I see an assertion by counsel that there has been something, a concert by the two of them in December 2015, and the statement wasn't made, it's a leading question, so it's essentially a statement wasn't made once, it was made more than once, and then the witness adopted it and said, yeah, it was in 2015. All right, so I think I see the portion of the transcript that you might be referencing. It is on page 45 of the rough of Mr. Donovan Thomas Sr.'s testimony. There's a question about a video shoot in Birdman. After this video shoot, to your knowledge, did your son ever promote anything dealing with Jeffrey Williams? The answer after the Fulton Industrial video shoot, no. Is that what you're talking about, or is it something else? Because it would be nice if y'all could point me to the part of the transcript. But you know what? 
Regardless, I think that the issue and the um, reason that Mr. Steele made the motion is because you said in front of the jury, and I hear you saying Mr. Steele did the same thing, which honestly, y'all, neither of you, that if, if it is improper, the fact that the other person is doing it doesn't make it less improper. Two wrongs don't make a right. Y'all are familiar with that. But um, I, I understand that, that you were trying to correct the misstatement about the date and essentially say, you know, it's not possible. The better way to have done that would probably have been to say, can we approach and call to Mr. Steele and the court's attention why it is that what he was saying about 2015 wasn't possible. So I don't think that it is um, anything that is serious enough um, to warrant a mistrial. But for both of y'all, for everybody, if something like that comes out and you think for whatever reason that and we'll deal with it up at the bench, okay? Your Honor, there is a- Can I get everybody's okay on that? Absolutely. All right, great. Go ahead. Thank you. There is an issue that we, I have experienced. I have made an objection and when I hear an objection, if the objection is made to my question, I pause. Yeah. But that does not happen. And so if when I object, a person continues to talk and improper information is being put before the jury, I don't know what else to do. Okay. If that I'll address that. So I noticed that as well. Um, everybody, when you hear the word objection, stop talking and let me hear what the objection is and then Sometimes I will still need to hear the entirety of the question because I won't know whether the objection is meritorious or not because I'll need to hear the rest of the question. But not always, so just stop what you're saying, let me hear the objection, and then if I need you to tell me the whole rest of the question or whatever it was you were saying, I will let you know that, and then you can, and then I'll make a ruling. Can we operate like that from now on as well? Great. Okay. 